Hello, this is Tim Sandal, back with you with another um, video. And the uh, topic for this video, the, the five minute video, is contact plants. So you're all familiar, hopefully, with the design of the basic um, contact plate, gridded on one side, smooth on the other. So the contact plate is uh, an agar plate. And this agar is triptone soya agar. So that's essentially just made of a pancreatic digest of casein, which comes from bovine source, an enzymatic digest of soya beans, some salts and agar, which uh, similar to the saddle plate, is made from uh, red seaweed. Now, what's interesting about the plate, if I can get this close enough, is that it has a dome shape. So it has a raised and convex surface. So it's different to the saddle plate, which is below the rim. This is where the agar comes above the rim in a dome shape. As well as the essential requirements for growth with the agar, the plate also contains neutralizers against the common disinfectants used. And the types of neutralizers will vary according to the disinfectant. But in this case, the plate will contain uh, lecithin and polysorbate, and these are effective at neutralizing uh, any residues of the quat product, the quaternary ammonium compound disinfectant. So this plate is used to assess the microbial load on a surface. And what it does, it creates a mirror image and then after a period of incubation, uh, so this is plate subjected to dual incubation, which will be at um, 20 to 25 degrees, followed by 30 to 35 degrees. And that essentially then grows whatever is on the surface, providing approximation, and then allows the numbers of microorganisms to be expressed by the surface area of the plate and the surface area of the plate is 25 uh, square centimetres. So the most important thing with the contact plate is the sampling technique. Now applicators are available and applicators are commonly used for uh, the most rigorous forms of contact plate sampling and these help to control the pressure because the pressure that I apply will be different to somebody else. So it evens out the pressure to get consistency of sampling and that happens by the weight applied. And then also through the time, the time that the plate remains in contact with the surface four and a timer in the applicator controls that and saves the user from having to remember how long that's for. However, I don't have an applicator with me, so I'm going to illustrate this in a manual way. So I'm going to take the lid off the plate. Normally, of course, I would have labelled the um, base of the plate. And I happen to have a uh, surface here, not a representative surface of clean rooms, because this is a piece of cardboard, and actually an old piece of Amazon packaging. But hopefully, if I bend this properly and hold this up, correctly and then tilt this, you'll see that the most essential element of taking the plate is not to come straight down onto the surface. Okay, you shouldn't do that. You should always sample with a rolling motion. So that means that the plate goes down and you have that tilting effect. So that's down and there's a slight roll you then leave it in contact for the required time, which is 10 seconds, and then lift up. And then the lid goes back onto the plate, and that plate would then go for incubation. The important information that comes on the plate is the agar. You probably can't see from here, but it, oh, probably here, there you go. It says TSA, so that's the triptone soya agar. 
then there's a reference to the presence of neutralizers and then there is the batch number. The plates are also irradiated because we are using these under grade A ISO class 5 conditions. So the packet that the plates come in will have an irradiation label on them as well, a colour indicator. And that means that the plates are sterile, so there's no risk of introducing contamination into the grade A environment. It's also important for each lot or batch of plates that they are assessed for their suitability before they are released for use. So with this, the plates undergo what's termed growth promotion, which is where a known challenge of organisms is put onto the agar, and it's a different organism for individual plates. And this proves that the plate can grow a number of organisms that might be found in the common clean room environment. So for example, a plate like this would be subject to testing with Staphylococcus, a representative of the human skin, a Pseudomonas that you might find if there were water residues anywhere, a Bacillus, which is representative of the common environment, Candida, again a representative yeast-like fungus associated with the human body, and Aspergillus, a filamentous fungus representative again of the general environment. So the contact plate might look humble, but there's a lot that goes into the ingredients with the neutralizers, the importance of incubation, and what it's doing is creating this mirror image that we can then express as a known result, and the importance of the sampling technique, particularly the initial rolling technique in order to take the surface sample correctly. Okay, well, hopefully um, this video has been of um, some use. So until next time, I'm uh, Tim Sandal and I wish you a great week. Cheerio.